Today I will show you how you can create zoom scroll effects like this one. To make your website more engaging and to wow your visitors you have got to have some fancy animations. But here's the thing, I'm not going to give you a big script you can throw on your website because that's not what you need. What you need is to understand how to do it the performant way, meaning 1. No JavaScript. JavaScript bloats your website and makes it slow. In some cases you also throw SEO out the window if you use JavaScript to animate and render text. I've made this mistake in the past so don't be me in the past. 2. We just want to use CSS which makes it a bit of a challenge but that's why I'm here to tell you how it works. So this is going to be your small guide on how to create and apply zoom scroll effects to your website using nothing other than HTML and CSS. Let's look at how it works. In this animation we have an h1 tag, an h2 tag with a span and a div with an image. We use this image to zoom in and out depending on what scroll position we have on the website. Some people might think there's tons of animations going on but let me break it down for you. First we have the h1 tag which is faded out once the background starts to zoom out. Second we have the image that is zoomed out and then transformed into a card before it moves out to the left. And third is the h2 tag with the text this is a card and a span inside with the text not. The span is animated into view by widening itself at a certain scroll position. Notice how they stick to the same place when we are scrolling. This is what people refer to as scroll jacking. We create this effect by using position sticky and a container with a big height. In our case I have used 400 VH which stands for viewport height and basically means four times bigger than the area that you see in your browser. All right but how are the animations made? The actually interesting parts. Every animation is made by combining animation timeline with a keyframe animation. To do this we could use the built-in animation timeline functions view and scroll which we can use to create simple scroll animations. These don't seem to work well with position sticky though so we will need to create a view timeline for the container and then connect all of the elements animation timeline that we want to animate. To make elements fade in, zoom and do different things at different scroll positions we can leverage something called animation range. What this does is to let us set the percentage range where the keyframes animations should execute. Let me show you an example. We create a keyframes animation that moves a box from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Say we want it to move from the left side when we have scrolled 50% of the website and it should end the animation when we have scrolled around 70% of the website. We use animation range and simply set the range from 50% to 70%. There are more complex things you can do with animation range. I have all of them in another video I can link at the end of this one if you're interested. This is pretty much all you need to know to create these animations. Let's see how we can use these to create the zoom scroll effect. But before we start I am working on a CSS course for deep diving into CSS animations and if you're interested hop on over to shanky.dev and join the newsletter and you will be the first one to know when it is released. Let's continue. Let's start with the HTML. It's quite simple. We have a section with the class zoom scroll. This is the container with the 400 VH that we talked about. Inside it we have an H1. Let's give it a class welcome. Below the H1 we have a div where the image will live. I will give it the class name zoom scroll image. Last but not least we have the h2 tag. Give it a class name this is a card. Add the text and also add the span not in here. HTML has a weird relationship with spaces so to make sure that the space is there around this word we will add nbsb around it. That's it let's check out the CSS. I have been nagging about this container for a while and here it is. Add the height and width and the view timeline so we can jack into it from the child elements. Add the h1 styling below dot welcome. We start with position sticky and set the position trigger to 50% top. Let's also style it to make it look good and give it a set index 1 to put it on top of the image. For the animations we can create a keyframes rule fade out that goes from opacity 1 to 0. Add it to the animation property and set the direction to both. Connect the animation timeline and for the range I have experimented a bit but I feel like 30% to 50% is pretty good. Alright this is how it looks right now. Pretty broken but 
it's going in the right direction. Let's do the image next. Create the class, give it the full height and width of the viewport. Set the background image, size, position and no repeat. Now to the fun part, the animations. We will create a zoom scroll keyframes rule in a minute. But first, let's add the animation properties. Put the name and both into the animation property. Connect the timeline and add 0 to 100% as range. The image should also leverage the sticky position and start from top 0. Now to the really fun part. I must have been tweaking this for like an hour. It's really fun to just sit and change these to different numbers and transforms. But here's what I ended up with. Start with a giant transform and around 50% it should be scaled down to 1. We also add a border radius 0 here to let the keyframes rule know that we don't want to change border radius sooner than 50%. Next at 70% I scaled it down even further to 0.4 and also gave it a border radius of 120 pixels. After 70% we start moving it left by applying translate x at 100% of the keyframe. Since we scale down the element a lot, we need to take that into account when we are moving it sideways. So we will need to add a pretty big shift to the left. Alright, it's starting to look pretty good right now. Just the last heading left. We can add the same styling to it as the last H1, with the exception of the color and the text shadow. It should also stick a bit higher up in the viewport, so let's set it to top 10%. Add display flex and center the contents since otherwise our span might jump around a little bit inside the H2 tag. We add the fade out animation here, but reverse it. Add the timeline and set the range to start from 50%, since that's when it will have room to show behind the image. We will animate the dot not span with max width and overflow hidden. We need to set it to inline block, otherwise max width will have no effect on the span. Connect the animations and set the range to between 74% and 76%. Alright, we have a good looking scroll animation with only CSS. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.